Hey guys, it's Justine. I'm here with Marquez, and we're in your studio. Yeah, we're in uh, we're in the East Coast. It's not so great outside, but it's nice and controlled in here, so it's awesome. So you know, I was like, Marquez, listen, we think that Maddie can come meet Mac. And they met, and they're friends now, and they follow each other on Instagram, and it's all great. It's the most incredible thing ever. Here's a little clip. <laughs> So today I thought we would do a week with iPhone video because I've been meaning to do one, but at this point, is it like three or four weeks Something that we've like had it? Something like three weeks with the iPhone 11. So however many weeks it's been, how has it been for you? Pretty good. So I've been on Space Gray iPhone 11 Pro Max. I thought I might go down to the smaller phone just for this one, but I, I just like the bigger screen, of course. I had the midnight green one that Apple mm -hmm. gave as a review unit. It's fine. I don't know how big of a midnight green fan you are. I've met some people who love it. Not so much for me. It's definitely not my color preference of choice, but okay. it was crazy because usually how I gauge if something is cool or not is mm -hmm. if my real friends in real life start messaging me and saying, that's cool or something like for that. For asking about it. Yeah, so I yeah. had way more people than I ever expected say that they love that color. I've had the same phenomenon of people being like, I want that green, the midnight green is sweet. I got the space gray. I got the silver, and of course added this nice razor pink case to it. It Clean. looks white. Yes. Very close, and closer to white than others because yeah. they've had these bright white colored phones in the past but yeah this is the brightest one yet but I'm curious like how that looks with scratching because it's matte matte white which is probably great for not showing fingerprints yeah but the scratching case, so. on the other side it's insane actually this is really kind of shocking as a house scratch this has gotten I mean I know I'm usually pretty abusive with things the front of my midnight green one that I had yeah got some serious scratching and that's probably because I had it in the same pocket as another phone and mm -hmm. they just like to attack each other and that's fine uh, this one I've kept in great shape. I'm probably jinxing it, but I don't have any blemishes yet. Have you gotten the battery life claimed improvement that they said they would give? I think the battery life is better, but it's hard to tell because I used to have the battery charging case. Oh, okay. So that extended it so much that I had to go back to just making sure I always have like a Mophie charger or something with me because I was so used to that battery life. Yeah. It does seem longer. It's pretty good. I mean, a lot of people, including me, used the 10R a lot last year, so we we're so used to this great battery life, but it is very good now on the 11 Pro Max. Not yeah. the best name, but better life's pretty good. <laughs> I've also been enjoying taking the wide angle photos and especially with the video. I think as long as you're in decent lighting, it makes a huge difference because yeah. trying to take low light wide angle photos, it doesn't work out so well. They're not so great. The lens is so... They're having fun. They're both guarding the door now. Keeping them quiet. <laughs> There's a wide angle shot. Nice. We got the zoom in and the 2X. The one thing that I have noticed is the consistency though throughout the three lenses, because I was doing a video with the OnePlus 7T. It was crazy just to see the consistency in those three camera lenses. Even the OnePlus 7T is better than some other phones I've used this year. Mm -hmm. I, I remember the ROG Phone 2 has an ultra wide and it looks like a completely different camera. Yeah. And I think there's one or two others. So calibrated from the factory should look much better, but like you said, there's no night mode on the ultra wide. It's not quite as perfect. I didn't expect it to be, yeah. but pretty good. I, I do really like it. I also like the front facing, having the, the wide angle Wide angle action, front facing, yeah. Which is pretty nice. And I just recently upgraded one of these phones, not gonna tell you which one, to the beta that has the deep fusion installed. So I, I wanna see if you can see which one is which. So one of them's deep fusion and okay. one of them's just a regular photo. Yes. Okay, I will try. So you know which one, okay, this will be. Do I know which one? Hold on a second. Okay. Sounds like you don't know what you're doing. Wait, one no, I'm not even sure. Okay. <laughs> Am I allowed to zoom or should I just look at the. I think you're probably going to have to zoom. Here you go. Okay. So, I, spoiler, I've seen a couple uh, Tyler Stallman tweets where he shared some photos side by side. And the biggest difference is in dim lighting, but not quite night mode lighting. Without zooming in, the only difference I see is a little more dynamic range on the left side. Just a little. And when I zoom, I hmm. don't see much difference here. Problem which is not even a problem at all is the iPhone does take really good photos. This is a little further away, so maybe this will make a difference. The difference with Diffusion, I think is it, it's just on all the time, but it makes more of a difference with lower light photos and with high detail photos, both very sharp photos. A little prance going on with Max Paw. Okay. So I think this one might be a little bit better of an example. Really? Okay. 
only because I've noticed something that may look a little sharper. Okay, I'm looking at the foam in the background and actually the foam in the background, it's so subtle, but it's a tiny, tiny bit sharper on the white iPhone. But look over here, like okay. this looks also sharper on this phone. Oh yeah, so now the, the white bricks in the background mm -hmm. on the wall are definitely sharper on the left iPhone and that's and then, less subtle. Yeah, and then look at Mac also a little sharper over here. We're really getting down to like <laughs> the Looking at the vent in. and the ceiling and the foam and things that aren't even the focus of the photo. If I'm a guessing person right okay. now. Okay, he's guessing. This is a completely a guess. I'm gonna say that the midnight green one has deep fusion just because of the little extra bit of dynamic range. And I think it has something to do with HDR. It's taking mm -hmm. an extra exposure, right? So I'm gonna go with midnight green. Ding, ding, ding. Nice. You are right. So okay. it's, it's so crazy because like in this picture specifically though, you can tell like Maddie looks a lot more crisp. Right. In it's this contrastier. Photo. Yeah. It's you know the uh, the filter, not filter, but the slider in Lightroom? Clarity. And then there's also the texture one, but I, yeah. if you bump up Clarity, it also has that same sort okay. of. Yeah. But you can even kind of tell like in here, like in the, in the, the carpet a little. The of the carpet. Yeah, yeah it's I contrast mean, here. See, now that I know what I'm looking for and I know which one's deep fusion, I'm gonna find all sorts of other things. You could, the carpet though, you can definitely tell on the carpet. But you know what this says about these cameras? It's like, they're already really good. They're already much better than last year. They're already top two, arguably the best smartphone camera out right now. Yeah. And that they're making it a little bit better in certain scenarios with this deep fusion mode. Just says that computational photography is great right now. Smartphone cameras are great right now. No complaints. No, it's really great. So it says Deep Fusion is designed to use artificial intelligence and other software tricks to improve the sharpness of images by capturing frames of differing exposures and merging them on its own. Which is already what it's doing with mm -hmm. Smart HDR, but it's doing it a little bit more and a little bit better. It says it's supposed to only work for medium to low light scenes, right. whereas Smart HDR night mode handle extremely bright and extremely dark scenes. Let me go. Back. Darker photo? Yeah, like I'm just gonna go over here Drastic and take- comparison. Like maybe take a picture of like these suitcases. Like in a shadow area? Yeah. I don't have deep fusion, so I can't help test it. Oh! That's medium light. This is scientific testing right here. This lighting looks way cooler. Is this more dramatic? It's more dramatic. There's a lot of people who just light like this all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, do a shot of me with deep fusion so I know what I look like okay, in deep fusion. Okay, ready? Okay. Okay. Do you remember which one is which? I already don't, so it's perfect. It's very, very subtle, but the mm. left is sharper. This one looks a little warmer, too. Mm. Left? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's oh deep fusion. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It's so very subtle, though. But that's so like, that's subtle. what software updates are in cameras. It's always subtle. Like, you get a good camera, you get your image processing pipeline, it's just gonna look a certain way. And then from there, you just do little tweaks and little things, and deep fusion is another one of those little tweaks in certain lighting situations that makes it better. This light is so moody. Should so we dramatic. leave it? I like it. Okay, so now we're in, <laughs> now we're in night we're in mode. We're in the photo lab. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, other than that, like the phone has been pretty great. I mean, I think the battery life is definitely enhanced. And I just, it's crazy because iOS 13, even if you have an older phone, it makes you feel like you have a new phone entirely. Yeah, so iOS 13 has been great on older phones. I'm curious if you had in the beginning a whole bunch of bugginess. Oh yeah. Because I did. Definitely sure. did. Still in Instagram, I have some bugs. Me too, Still. adding the videos. Yes. So I can't add videos at all. Crops are weird sometimes, mm -hmm. and sometimes stories don't work and they've been chopped off. Yes, 13 had a bunch of improvements and it's helped with older phones, but it also had some bugs yeah. that they're continuing to fix. They've been on like a rapid pace with that. I think initially it was a little rough because Jenna had probably one of the biggest problems ever, and I think she usually does have a little trouble with her iCloud backups. Do you want to come tell us real quick? Just pop in here, say hello. It was just stuck on like the white screen with the Apple and like the status bar. Yeah. So I did all the resets, I did all the recoveries, I did the DFU, but every time it reset, it just got stuck. So for like four days, incredible battery life, by the way, the phone was just on on that screen and there was nothing I could do. Every time I reset it, it just got stuck. Because you could Can't still reset that. it, but then it was getting stuck doing like the iCloud restore. The restore. Yeah, which you could see in one of the updates, they had a result for that. So, huh. But her phone's working great now. They ended up giving her another one just because it was the phone was on for like five days. 
That's a so. pride of being in tech is when you see a software update and the the little like notes say like the exact issue you had and yeah. that's what they fixed. It was probably the same day because of your phone. phone. They're like, here's your update. I'm like, dude. Oh, <laughs> I know. I mean, the backup took a really long time because we were actually at camera camp in the middle of nowhere in Montana. Yeah. So the internet was not the best with a bunch of tech people that just got their new iPhones. So we were all trying to do the backup. So my iCloud ended up taking like six days. Y'all probably room. overloaded one tower oh, we in totally Montana. Did. There was nothing nice. around, but it was really fun because we all just got to unbox our phones together. It was like, I mean, it was camera camp. That's nice. what we were literally doing. But it was really cool. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I think everything's been good. I'm just looking forward to more of the, the updates for iOS. I mean, that the was the main, the main things that they wanted to fix and improve with this phone or battery mm -hmm. life. We've seen that. Cameras, we got them. They're great. And iOS, and of course the A13 Bionic. I don't know if you've seen it be faster at anything notably, but it seems fine. I mean, playing games, we've been playing Sneaky Sasquatch on Apple Arcade, okay. which is the best game ever. Should I get Apple Arcade? For Sneaky Sasquatch, yes, you should. Okay. I like it because I have a problem with microtransactions. So yeah. Yeah. If there's a game that wants me to do upgrades, like I'm going to just kind of forget that this is real money until it actually hits my inbox. And it's like, what have you done? So just knowing that I'm paying one price to play a game and not have to get tricked into paying for other things. Five bucks? $4.99. Five yeah. bucks a month. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. Yeah, it just, if the games are good, then it's worth it. I mean, I would have paid $4.99 for this game anyway. Oh, so it's definitely worth it. Jenna is obsessed with it. Like, just be honest. Sneaky obsessed with sneaky. Yes, it's so cute. You want to see it? Hmm. Jenna's further along. Let's see your phone. Oh, gosh. I have a backpack. It's hilarious. So like this. you're a Sasquatch, but you can dress like a human to try to like how avoid. Do you, how do you win sneaky Sasquatch? Well, you got to sneak around. You because, sneak around. Yeah, you sneak around so you don't get caught. Okay. <laughs> Here it is. Oh Arcade. God. Look at this splash screen. It's go so fishing. good. Wait, this seems like a game where you're just walking around doing things for fun. Yes. But you don't like win. Well, we haven't got that far yet. Okay, because the description says go fishing in a lake, play quick nine holes on the golf course, and eat some food. That's so just far things you've you can do. There done are that. Tasks, though. Okay. There's like, there's like a treasure map you have to like find the pieces. And you get like a score that goes up as you do things, probably, well, or something. You just feel good about yourself. Yeah. Okay. But Sasquatch has to like go to sleep every night, so like if you don't go to sleep, like you'll pass out, and then the ranger finds you and sends you like back into the woods. Okay. It might not recording. be for everyone. <laughs> I think it is for everyone. Adventure style. Okay. So that's, so she's dressed like a human right now. So, oh, that's a Sasquatch. Yeah, so there he is. This is how you sneak. Why does the bear have bees by him? Does he need help? He's, he got stuck in the... Do you have to save him? No, he's happy there. Oh, he's happy there because he's eating the honey? So you can go and like steal people's picnic baskets. So it looks like that's already empty. No, it's a fish! So you can put the fish in your bag. And then you're gonna go to a picnic. Table. Just go around robbing people? Well, yeah, I mean, you're just taking their food so you can live. You can paddle across the lake so there's a human. So usually you have to sneak around and hide from the humans. What happens if you get caught? They, the ranger takes you back to your home uh, and you go to sleep. So that's Sneaky Sasquatch. I think everyone should get it. Oh wait, I gotta right. show you how I eat. This is incredible. Okay, so you take, oh, you got a lot of food. Yeah. Wow, wow Jenna's been fishing. So you just like, Stick it in your mouth. <laughs> you manually have to do all of this? That's hilarious. You do. I can imagine as they were developing this game, they're like, people are gonna love this feature. It's really great. It's gonna change everything. Oh, I love it. So yeah, that's a iPhone 11 that we've had for three, four weeks now. Something like that, yeah. yeah. It's the greatest phone they've ever made. I enjoyed your iPhone 11 review, which was, Thank yes, you. was a little late. It was, but it was. It was still good because it's, I mean, it's such a great phone. Too easy. It's just the phone they obviously should make. Are you are you as pumped as I am about the 2020 iPhone? Oh, man. Uh, there's so many things. This is what I always end up talking about with every new iPhone that's come out is, wow, the 2020 iPhone might have USB-C, might have Apple Pencil support, maybe. 5G. Might have 5G. Might have a ProMotion 120 hertz OLED display. It might have in-screen fingerprint reader. Might have Touch ID coming back. Might have reverse wireless charging. Might have no notch. There's all these things that it might have, so. 2020 is gonna be insane. It's a great phone, but I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna have a new Xbox next year. Yeah. We're gonna have the Surface Duo, 2020. The Neo. Who knows what else is coming out? Plaid Roadster, all these oh things. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah. Well guys, thank you for watching. Thank you so much for being in my video. Thanks for having me. And I think we're gonna be doing a podcast here very shortly, yep. so make sure you guys go check that out if it's out. And if not, keep an eye out or an ear out, whatever it is that you do. That's what you should do. Yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs>